All righty, guys, I've got another session. Gymnasts, the 28th. And this time, I'm going to start off a quick little State of the Union addressing the state of the campaign. And, well, last session, I had a little bit of a, a crisis of faith where I, I really questioned the future of the campaign. Uh, mostly, well, not not entirely due to, but definitely the ca catalyst was the great troll joke debacle of 2023. And uh, there was a moment where I had feared, you know, I've come to reap what I have sown. I have uh, allowed, made too many compromises and allowed... Too much silliness, and I've just started the the Cold War arms race of people trying to one up each other until this just devolves into utter absurdity. Uh, but you know, my resolve was tested, and I've since come to realize, and God gives His hardest battles to His strongest warriors and that this was a salvageable campaign it is not entirely lost so i'm giving into sunk cost fallacy or i'm not giving into that uh whichever one um uh uh you know we're just gonna keep pushing on uh i was also so i got some feedback on these diaries in general as well and uh, I was told that some of them had a scolding tone, particularly the last one, which I definitely, well, this caused me to uh, listen to all of them back again since the first one. And I definitely noticed that the more and more I had, at least my players were telling me that they were listening to them, the more and more my tone changed or from like entirely just an objective retelling of events with some of my thoughts like interspersed throughout into more of an like opportunity for me to sort of like editorialize and sort of use it to like tell my players indirectly what I don't like that they're doing, which I've realized is not what I want this to be. Uh, you know, I want this series to be more of just a an actual tool for me to listen back to and remember what actually has happened so far and just give some of my thoughts about just like what what I would what my thought process was while any of this was occurring, and you know just to sort of see how I sort of develop and evolve as, you know my concerns change from my beginning of my DMing, at least of this campaign, versus what it looked like towards the end, like what my concerns were about, and um, so I'm gonna make an active effort to keep this more to an objective retelling of what has occurred and I like I think that's about what I wanted to say about that so we can launch right into the events of this most previous session uh, so right off the bat we had Humdu, Adrian and Meng all in the hold trying to devise a plan to get rid of these uh trolls so i, I guess i will say as my oh uh, i guess yeah so i was definitely more willing to talk about behind the screen and open up the curtain when i realized my players or back when i you know, my players weren't listening to this. Uh, I guess now I should probably keep some more of that hidden and keep that illusion of the world alive. Uh, anyway, so, okay. 
So we had Humdu, Adrian, and Meng. They were ill in the old Khazad uh, Lernaz. They were trying to devise a plan to get rid of these trolls. And eventually they come up with the idea to have Humdu fly a bit away and uh, try to split up their forces by using the horn and try to make more manageable sections of trolls to deal with and i like i don't think this was ever really gonna work uh just because trolls are quite powerful especially these armored and weapon wielding trolls and to take there's nine of them to take all nine of them out would have required some pretty serious uh you know, resources or some truly, like, wild plan that was just going to be able to wipe out all these trolls at once. Uh, so possibly the wish card that they had, that definitely would have done it, but just running at them and trying to kill them all with weapons, that was probably not the best uh, plan of attack for this. Anyway, they so Nipsey and Hilgar, they sneak in through the hole, through those caves. They come back with ten men-at-arms from the Duke. And they launch their plan. Uh, the majority of the party sallies forth out of just the hole, or the, the hold, the main door. And they start fighting with the trolls, and the trolls are just absolutely slaughtering them. Adrian gets nearly killed by this troll king, and the men at arms all just get slaughtered pretty much instantly. Uh, but uh, Hilgar flies up and drops a bunch of coins onto the troll king's heads from super high up. Which I was not aware of, of any sort of specific ruling, uh, according to D&D. And it was not something I had ever come up with any rules for in my system. So I just said, okay, well, I guess they each count as a... I'll just let them each count as an improvised weapon. But I imagine most of them are going to get lost in the wind, and most of them are not going to land on the target. I'll say only 5% of the gold pieces hit. But of those 5%, they each deal 1d4 damage. And well, this ended up dealing like 140 damage to the Troll King and killing him like effectively instantly. And in hindsight, I've since realized I should have. Well, I looked up uh, on you know the internet what other DMs have done to rule that kind of situation. And the first one I found seemed pretty reasonable that had it based on the weight of the object uh, and like the height. And after calculating the weight of the coins and the height, I think in total it should have dealt like 2d6 damage altogether. Uh, and I ended up having to deal like 60d4 or something. Um, so that definitely should not have worked, but I think in my mind I was also okay with justifying it because I figured like, well, they're kind of paying a thousand gold to kill this thing. So, you know, this might be a really roundabout way of doing that, but if they had paid a thousand gold to hire a bunch of soldiers to run in and fight these guys, then, uh, like, if anything dropping a thousand gold pieces on his head is probably like among the more inefficient ways to translate gold into killing of a monster uh, so so i was okay with it but in the future i probably <laughs> i will make sure to use uh, proper rules for dropping objects on people's heads from up above uh, but, you know, that certainly has taught me a lesson and that, like, no matter how many rules you think you've covered when writing your system, there's always, always, always more to, uh, that at some point you're going to have to just come up with rulings on the fly. 
Okay, so they kill this troll king and all the other trolls at sort of like start to retreat after this, especially after like everyone gets back inside the safety of the hold. The trolls are going to have to prepare some sort of siege equipment or a lot, something along those lines in order to actually breach the doors of this hold. Or mayhaps they'll eventually also find out about the sacred cave entrance. Um, because you know they they might at some point track down some of their freed goblin slaves. That remains to be seen. And Ilgar took the crown that the troll king was wearing, and after attuning to it, they've since sort of discovered it's a type of uh, like Sauron. A ring situation where the longer you wear it, the more and more you are compelled to do the bidding of the corpse weaver. Uh, so they did discover that these trolls were, uh, to some degree, under the influence of the corpse weaver. And anyway, so they head outside, and I, I believe they are... Yeah, so they plan on heading to, like, the Duke, I believe. But they go outside, and they encounter a homunculus by the name of Fliggelfig. And he uh, helps the player, takes the player, or, well, asks the players to help him return to his mess master up in a flying, invisible castle in the sky known as the Tower of Reason. And, uh, uh, Hilgar specifically flies up there, and then... They, he meets the wizard, Marzin, who teleports the rest of the party up to him. And they all introduce themselves and are getting to know each other. And Humdu has an interaction with him where he says something along the lines of, like, I am Humdu the Troll Slayer, or something along those lines. And Marzin does his little magic and is like, oh, well, you... Seem like more of a humdo the troll bugger to me. Um, and then Adrian explains to Humdo that a bugger is someone who, uh, you know, fucks someone up the ass, as the old British terminology would go. And Humdo is pretty offended by this, so he responds by killing Merzin uh, and just like shao conning his heart out of his rib cage or is that i forget who that is whatever but they he, he kills marzin uh marzin some old feeble wizard and they sort of have a while where they discuss how they should respond to the situation and meng takes marzin's magical hat of wonders uh, and eventually concludes that she should use her wish to revive Marizin, uh, which happens. And then Marizin is brought back to life, and uh, the situation sort of gets explained. And uh, Marizin gives Meng a, a magic item, the Fiddle of Elemental Harmony, uh, just a like very powerful bard magic item that. Meng is, at this point, literally incapable of using. And Marzin teleports all of them back to the hold. Uh, here they meet back up with Cletus. And they head back, finally, to Arcor City to basically let the Duke know what's been going on and see what he has to offer uh, information-wise. So on the road back, they there's an assassination attempt against Hilgar, a, a reference to his backstory, uh, and they, they kill the assassin. So uh, this remains to be resolved. We don't know exactly what that assassin's purpose was or his motivation, uh, but I'm sure that will come back up at some point. But Hilgar... Uh, also, we probably won't be seen for a, a long, long time. Um, oh, also, Hilgar, yeah, he, he took the crown of this corpse weaver, so I think we'll be able to come up with something for him to be doing over the course of his uh, absence. 
And so they get back to Arcor City. Adrian gets a letter from Nindalad informing him that his wife has been uh, rescued by Nindalad himself. And uh, yeah, so Nindalad tells Adrian, hey, uh, like, she's kind of upset right now, but. You know, she was looking for this whole Orison Oriflame thing. If you bring that back to us, then I'm sure that she'll, like, feel a whole lot better about this situation. And, uh, so the Adrian sort of inquires, like, all right, so what can we do to get this banner? The Duke says, like, well, looky here. If you, if you kill this hag that has been messing with my people, I'll let you borrow the banner. Uh, now, at this point, the Duke is unaware that the... that Adrian... Man, there's a potential plan Adrian might have here to, uh, like, effectively steal the banner and then give it to the elves. And... Or he... he you know, it's possible they try to come up with some other scheme. Uh, anyway, they run over to the washerwoman... Uh, oh yeah, first, well, they kill a bunch of red cats that have been working for her, uh, and just committing some, you know, uh, chicanery and shenanigans and killing children or whatever over in the woods and kidnapping them, and they get to the hut of the washerwoman, and they kill her. Uh, this was supposed to be more of a, specifically tied to Nipsey, who was for six years transformed into a frog by this hag, and they didn't have a whole lot prepared for this, unfortunately, so I do think... Uh, if I were to redo this, I definitely would have had some more specific elements. Like, maybe there's another uh, frog there of someone that the hag has transformed that was like a friend or a relative of Nipsey for him to specifically, like, rescue from the hag. Like, something along those lines. Um, but this was sort of more of just a, oh, geez, well, there really hasn't been a whole lot of combat for most of the players this session. I could tell people were starting to get a little antsy, so this was more of a last-minute throw-in. Um, so definitely I could have done more with that, but, uh, I, I did not think of it in the moment. Anyway, they get some potions uh, from her hut, and that about wraps it up for this session. So I guess we will see what happens next time. Uh, alrighty, I'll see you then.